Today I'm going to have a look at the Vivar hydroponic system. This is a deep water culture system. It consists of buckets with water inside and air stones. The air stones create a lot of moisture around the roots and add extra oxygen to the whole system. I have the eight bucket system, but they also come in a four bucket and a five bucket system. On Amazon right now, the eight bucket system is at 140. The regular price is 178. I'm going to put links to that in the description below. And those are affiliate links. And what that means is that if you use those links and go buy anything on Amazon, I get a small commission and it doesn't cost you any extra. And that helps support the channel. So in this video, I'm going to describe the system, give you my first impressions of it. I'll show you how to assemble it, and then I'll describe a test I'm going to run on these systems. And I'm actually going to compare this system, which is a deep water system, to the Cracky method and see which one produces better plants. I'll introduce that comparison at the end of this video, but the actual results will be in a separate video, and I'll put a link to that at the end of this video. The whole system seems quite well made. This, this is a heavy duty bucket. The top is really heavy duty as well. I don't see you having any problems with this. You can see that they have special lids. The center is depressed here, and there's a net type bucket here. The idea is that we're gonna fill that with clay pellets that are also supplied, and then the plant roots are put into the clay pellets. And the roots will then dangle down into the liquid. As the plant grows, that water level will drop a bit, and we'll have water down here to keep the roots nice and moist, but we'll have an air layer up here that has high humidity because of the pumping system. Each pail is fitted with one of these air stones, and that air line is connected to this pump. And as you can see, the pump is designed with a manifold so that we can do eight pails at the same time. Another handy feature of these pails is that they come with a siphon system here so that as the water level drops, it also drops in here. And you can see the level. So without opening up the bucket, you can see that it's too low and you have to add some more liquid. So that's kind of a nice feature. Now, when I first looked at these pails, I thought, I don't really want holes in the side of my pails here. Aren't they going to leak? So I put one of these together and I've been testing it. Filled right up to the top with water. And there's no leakies through here. There's some pretty nice grommets that they give you. And that prevents leakage. So this system seems to work pretty good. They also supply you with a bunch of check valves here. If we didn't have the check valves and the power went out, the pump would stop. It would stop pushing air out and water would siphon back into the pump and damage it. So the check valves prevent that. So yeah, nice little feature. These Vivor systems have been around for a number of years. And if you look at some videos of older systems, you'll see that they've made a number of improvements. So they've been around long enough that they have a good, reliable system. Now let me show you how you put the whole system together. Now let's go over the assembly of this unit. First thing you can do is assemble the pump. And it comes with and there's sort of four pieces here. You got the pump itself, you have a little rubber hose, you have a manifold here, and some clamps. Stick the hose on here, put on these clamps. Now you'll probably need pliers for this, unless your fingers are really strong. These just squeeze together and you slip them on. When you're finished, you want the manifold all the way in, and you want to position so that the outlets are horizontal to the surface the pump is going to sit on. That's all there is to putting the pump together. The next step is to assemble each of the buckets. When you're finished, there'll be a hose going through the bucket with an air stone at the bottom. You want this long enough so the stone hits the bottom of the pail. You also want to attach this side hose. This will show you what level the water is inside the bucket. The first step is to take three of these grommets and put them in the holes on the pail. These are a little tricky to put in. You have to squeeze the end and kind of use your fingertips to push it in. Once you get the hang of it, it's a little easier. There we go. Now take this rod. The rod I got was already assembled with this end piece. If yours is not assembled, just push them together and tighten this nut here. That goes in the bottom grommet. There 
Now take this piece here, put it in the top grommet, and then snap the hose in place. You'll also be given a very tiny orange ball which you put inside the tube. And that ball will just move up and down with the water level, making it a little easier to see the level. Cut a length of tube that's long enough to go from the pump to the bottom of the pail. It has to be long enough so that this much of the hose is actually going to be inside the pail. Now this part's a little tricky, but the idea is to push it through this grommet. And once you're part of the way in, come to the inside and get some needle nose pliers and pull it through. Once you've got a couple inches going here, it's pretty easy to pull the rest through. Check that the length is okay and put your air stone on the end. There you go, the bucket's assembled. The last step is to attach this hose to one of the outlets in the pump manifold. If we connect this directly, and the power goes out, the pump will stop. When the pump stops, water will siphon from the pail into the pump and damage it. To prevent that, they provided a number of these check valves. These valves will only blow air in one direction, so they have to be put in the right way. In order to attach the check valve, we want a bit of hose coming out here and then the check valve somewhere around here. So we have to cut the hose here. Now it's important to put this check valve in the right way. Air only flows one way and it's blocked from coming the other way. To tell which is which, just blow in one of the ends. If you can blow air through it yourself, then the pump will be able to blow it through. So put it in that same orientation. Now these can be a little tricky to put on here. So if you're having trouble, take this hose and put it in some warm water. Let it sit there for a few seconds, maybe 30 seconds. That will heat up this hose and soften it, and then it becomes really easy to push on. Now maybe give it another check to see if you put the check valve on the right way. and then simply attach it to the manifold. And these barbs are a little hard to get on here, so softening this up with warm water really works well. Once you've got this attached, you're ready to run the system. Now, what if you don't wanna use all eight pails at the same time? Say you wanna set up two of them and leave the others off. One of the problems with this manifold is that when the pump is on, air is coming out all of the tubes. If you only attach two hoses, almost no air will go through it because it's so much easier for the air to just come out of these open ones with nothing attached. So you have to plug these other ones up. One of the easiest ways to do that is to use the check valve. Remember, the check valve only goes in one direction. If you reverse the check valve, it acts like a stopper. So just attach a bit of hose with the check valve going the wrong way and you've stopped the ones you're not using. The buckets are all set up and it's time to get some plants in there. So what I'm gonna grow is some tiny Thames. They're a shorter tomato. I also have this uh, patio hybrid, which is also a shorter tomato. And then two different kinds of red peppers. Now these would be a little larger plants and I wanna see how they do in this system. I'm also gonna plant some lettuce and some bush beans. How do we get plants that have been growing in soil into the hydroponic system? Take our plant, and this cell happens to have two plants, so I don't really want the small one. We'll just use the large one. Try to take off as much of the soil as you can. Now this does do a fair amount of root damage, but try to be as gentle as possible. Now take the root ball and put it in some water and give it a good shake. That will knock off a lot of the soil. I don't know how important it is to get all this off, but everyone says get rid of as much as you can. Personally, I don't think it's that important. So now we have a nice root system. We can separate these two guys. My tray, I've half filled it with clay pellets, and now I'm going to put these roots on top of that. 
I don't want them sitting too deep in that liquid nutrient water. These roots are used to having a lot of air around them and we don't want to submerge them. So we'll keep the roots fairly high up in here. They will start growing down and once they hit the water, then a different kind of root will develop that's used to being in water. It's a good idea to spread out the roots a little bit. Now put more clay pellets around it to hold it in place. These clay pellets are pretty dusty when you get them, so I've put them through a rinse process to get most of the dust off. I put it back in the pocket and we're ready to go. Now all I have to do is do the same thing with my other plants. So I've got my bucket set up. I'm gonna run them here on my deck, one of the sunniest spots I have. The pump is sitting down in the middle here, so it can easily reach all of these buckets. These six over here are going to be tested with the deep water culture technique. So the air stone in each of these six will be bubbling all of the time. The two in the far end, I've set up so that the air won't be bubbling through there. So that's testing the cracky method. To fill these, I had to make up a fair amount of nutrient solution. And for that, I'm using the master blend. This is called a lettuce formula. Comes in three different packages. The basic fertilizer, Epsom salts, and calcium nitrate. Now, those who watch my videos know that I tell everyone there's no use for Epsom salts in the garden. And that's true. But here we don't have any soil, so we do have to add the magnesium. I made up the solution on a large garbage pail. But that wasn't enough for all of these. So what I did was I made up one batch and I put equal amounts in each bucket. Then I made up a second batch, exactly the same as the first one, but I might have made a slight adjustment, you know, when I'm measuring them out. Maybe I'm not that accurate. Then I took the second pail and again, put it in each one of these. That ensures that the nutrient solution in every one of these is identical. It's important to do things like that if you're running a comparison experiment. I then put the lids on, put in some of the clay pellets, and I'm ready to plant. So I hope you found this video interesting. It's going to take a while for me to evaluate the results, and I'm going to put that into a separate video. But if you want to see my other hydroponic videos, click on this link right here. And if you'd rather see some other type of gardening myths, Click over here. Happy gardening.